Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we have something kind of special because this is going to save you guys with home theater systems a lot of money if you'd like to enhance the bass on your home theater system or just your regular audio system inside your house. Supercar Street Racing here, and today we have the Blaupunk Digital Bass Processor. This is the EP1600X. And what this guy is designed to do is enhance and process your low frequency sounds and create bass maybe where there is inadequate bass or lack of bass. Now, the first thing we notice right away about the Blaupunk EP1600X here is that it is named EP1600. Now that is a good case for proving that the, the uh, Blaupunk unit is a clone of the Epicenter, which costs about eight times, uh, six to eight times more than the Blaupunk EP1600. Now taking a look at the box here on the EP1600, we can see that it says that it is a digital based processor. Now notice one thing about this. This is actually designed for a vehicle, meaning that the power input on this is 12 volts and it comes with a base knob here to adjust the base level on your Epicenter EP1600. Now taking a look at the back of the box and the side of the box, Right here it says Base Note Restore EP1600. On the front we have the maximum input level of 15 volts, uh, the maximum output level is 13.5 volts, and the signal to noise ratio is 130 decibels. On the back it has some of the same information, tells you the total H, uh, THD, total harmonic distortion, it sits at 0.003%. Um, less than 60 dB of balanced input, no, in, input noise rejection. It tells you that it's got 10,000 ohms of impedance and it tells you that it needs a 150 amp power draw and that would be at 12 volts. However, it recommends a one amp fuse. The house units are four to five times more expensive than this car unit. Now, why on earth would you want to take a car base processor and use it on your home theater system in your house? Well, it's quite simple. The car based processors do the same thing as the Behringer, the PB, and the DBX units for your home, and those do subharmonic synthesis and bass enhancement. But this was a total of about 40 bucks for the actual unit and another $10 here for the power supply. So this is just a standard 12 volt power supply that plugs into your house. This particular power supply has a place where you can connect leads to it so it is perfect for a car audio environment where this guy will just have a screw to put 12 volts and a ground and a remote turn on into the device now we're going to take a look at what we have for the house that accomplishes the same thing all right guys we are here in the audio closet taking a look at the behringer EX1200 Ultra Bass processor. This guy right here is very, very difficult to find, and when you do find them, they pop up around the $250 to $300 range. I do have two of these in the house. I have one in my home theater room, my legit home theater room, and I have one here feeding the whole home audio subwoofer system, which consists of three subwoofers and is growing by the day. So what this guy does is it does a digital subharmonic processing and it actually enhances the bass just as the Epicenter and the uh, Blaupunkt will do. However, this is designed for the home, so it has the 120 volt input. It has a number of adjustments here uh, under the digital harmonic processor. It has frequency, dynamic punch. Um, it has a bass mode between ultra low and punch a base level, and then also it has a limiter here, a base limiter, and then it has a adjustment for satellite speakers. If you actually want to power your satellite speakers with this guy, not power, but process your satellite speakers, you can do that as well. 
So that's the Behringer Ultra Bass Pro EX 1200 subharmonic bass processor. We'll pop up online every once in a rare while. If you really want to do a home unit, this one is cheaper than the DBX, uh, like 120, I think is the model number on the DBX, and does the same, if not better, um, processing. And then your third choice would be the PV unit, which I have had a hard time finding at all online. Now that we've taken a look at our home subharmonic synthesizer, we're gonna take a look into the box of the EP1600 by Blaupunk and see exactly what's inside and how we're going to be making our connection. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got the Blaupunk EP1600X here. And here's a good look at the box. Look at the back of the box, the side, and the front of the box. This has not been opened yet, but you can see this is called the Digital Bass Note Restorer, and the EP is a good homage to the Epicenter, which is what the original manufacturer was who designed this type of technology for the car. However, the Epicenter is over $150, so we opted for the Blaupunk so that we could test a lower model unit and going right in here see if you can talk to Blaupunkt you can get a free car charger and USB cable so they want you to do a review to do that so we do have that review here and also we will make one on Amazon and get our free charger and now okay so we accidentally woke up the TV there but here is the manual that comes with the EP1600X and it shows you how to install the device here. Shows you setting your voltage for the size of the speaker. We have a 10 inch Polk subwoofer. Shows you signal connections here from your head unit. We are actually connecting it from our receiver there. And then it shows you the functions. Shows you the input, the output, the dash remote control, the power connector and the para bass controls and that is how you actually set up the device there and then on the next page here we have what's inside of it and then we have connections and wiring once again for showing you how to do the power part so this will require 12 volts and a ground which we will provide with this power supply here and then also it will require a turn on wire. So that will be also 12 volts. And then it has your troubleshooting steps on the back. Next here, it looks like we've got a base knob here. Take a look at that. And we will mount that somewhere. Don't know where yet. Somewhere convenient or just set it and forget it. But there is the included base knob and it looks like it has an LED as well. And it looks like it works off of a phone style connector. Ah, then we have a little power block adapter here, looks like for doing the power. It looks like it pushes in the side and then you put your wiring in there. And yes, we have a phone cable. I think they're called RJ11s. Pretty lengthy phone cable. If you were in your car, you would run this from the unit in the back of the car all the way up to your dash and then mount this control here and you would plug each end into your DB, sorry, your EP1600X. I wanted to call it a DBX, but yeah, it just plugs in just like that and then runs to the actual unit in the back of the car. We're gonna go ahead and unbox the EP1600X from Blaupunkt. And we're going to use this box for a nice stand for it as we open up this box and take a look at this fresh, never been opened device here. And you are saving around a hundred plus dollars by doing it this way rather than going with an epicenter. You're saving maybe 200 plus dollars from going with a Behringer, which are very hard to find the uh, ultra bass and you can, you can find the DBX uh, subharmonic synthesizers, but they're up in the three or $400 range. And we're talking about for your home. Inside the bag here, we have our EP1600X looking all beautiful and brand new. 
came in a nice EP1600X condom and hopefully this lights up and if we see here we got our wide and our sweep those are the base adjustments that's actually how you adjust for the subsonic harmon the uh, subharmonic synthesis right here these two guys right here and on the side here looks like we have our balanced inputs and it looks like you output here to your subwoofer so you need a stereo input to drive this and I believe we have that and we will need an RCA cable to go out of this to our actual Hulk subwoofer down there in the corner and we will end up mounting this somewhere maybe behind the, the dresser maybe we can mount it up nice and screw it onto the back of the dresser as it is a permanent fixture here and then what we do here is we have our power supply that I purchased and I will give all the specs for this in the description but this has a nice adapter on the end where you can actually connect wiring here so we'll have to get a little wire to run from here to the box here the blow pumped and it looks like here our little power plate thing plug goes on and they do give you a bunch of screws and stuff to mount the device with so this is how this actually connects so this pushes in the side right here Let's see it might go this way yep it goes facing up with the screws up and it's a little difficult to push in there it is and then you take a small screwdriver loosen those up and you put your ground all the way on the right your 12 volts here in the middle and your remote now remote is just 12 volts and that's supposed to be from your head unit that powers this guy on now we won't be able to do that here so we will just leave the device on all the time it's not going to hurt it and that will go right there so that's a look at the inside of the box and what is in the box for the plow punk ep1600 digital base reconstruction processor so now we've had a good look at what's included with the EP1600. We took a look at all the accessories, how all the connections are made, and how we're going to actually interface this with the 5.1 setup here in the bedroom from the project a few months ago. So let's go ahead and get this guy connected and see if we can tweak the sounds. Guys, welcome back. We have our EP1600X here laid out on the table. And my plan is, I don't know if these RCA cables work, but, um, I am going to make a little bundle here with these zip ties and these will be the outputs so they're going to come off just like this kind of hard to plug in and then we are going to just kind of bunch these together like a normal RCA cable would be bunched together Pretty sure these RCA cables are okay, not 100% sure. But you can see I'm just making them into a pair. Now this will feed the subwoofer. So this is out of the device and into the subwoofer. And then we have a set of RCA cables coming from the receiver sub output feeding the Blaupunk EP1600X. So all we're doing now is making this little group of cables and then we're gonna make our power cables next. After we're done with this, we will cut these little tabs off of the zip ties. I'm really big about um, wire management. So this is why I'm doing this now and grab my scissors over here that make it easier to cut these guys off and we will have our finished signal wire so all we did just a brief overview was just make it a little bit easier to manage these two separate rca cables as one bundle stereo left and right and now we need power, ground, 
and turn on. So we have quite a long cable on the end of this power adapter. We have our power cable I just robbed and we will go ahead and cut the end off of this guy because one end goes to the power adapter, the other end goes to the wild pump. And so we have a little bit stripped off there at the end or separated and we take our wire strippers and pull off a little bit of wire. There's not very much wire in there, however, it does not need to handle a lot of current. Not even an amp, it's more like milliamps. So this side will be kind of pulled back too much, but this side will be for the blow punk. And we actually can go ahead and connect that. So we're going to use red as positive and red with black as negative. And I don't like that we have to put the wire directly in here without any kind of like pin, but I'm going to double up the wire, it's thin. So I'm just folding that over. And we have ground on the very left, but I'm gonna do the 12 volts first, so we just need a little screwdriver in there. And we got the power wire in there and then we tighten down the screw. The screwdriver stripped so it won't very really tighten that much. Yeah, it won't even loosen. The screwdriver's busted so I need to go find a new screwdriver. All right, I found my much better screwdriver here. And we need to loosen this up and of course it will not stay for some reason inside the screwdriver. Loosen that guy up. Put our wire in there and tighten it back up. Really don't like how loose that is. I'm gonna do that again. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of wire hanging out. I guess there's no chance of those shorting out at this point. Now the other side, we have to be mindful of positive and negative connection on the power adapter. So let's go ahead and strip a little bit back for that side. Right, I'm just wrapping this end up with some electrical tape just to kind of give me some self-assurance that this is not going to short. So I already wrapped one inside between the wires. Now I'm just taking one over those exposed terminals. 
And that is good enough. Let's power it on one more time. Make sure it works. Immediately we have power here. And so now all that is left to do is test it. All right, gentlemen, we have, and ladies, we have our EP1600X powered up and we have connected the, actually have not connected anything to anything, but here's the output of the receiver. We're plugging it into balanced input there. And then the cable that we created goes to the back of our subwoofer. Usually should power out the sub because it will probably hum. Okay, it didn't really make that much of a complaint. Now I don't know that these RCA cables are good. That is going to be part of the testing here. And now we can get our TV on and maybe see if we can create some base here. And we're going to put on something on Prime Video, which probably something with good low frequencies. We can go ahead and test the Blahplunk EP1600X. So I'm looking for a movie here. And here is Tomorrow War, which has bass in it. Let's see if this does anything. All right, let's see if we have inputs and outputs. And it is loading. You guys can't see it. It's up on the screen here. Okay, do you hear bass coming out of the sub? Let me see if I can find something here with actual bass in it. Okay, we have our adjustment here. I noticed the Blaupunk logo lit up on that one. Yeah, it looks like the more level we have, the more the logo lights up. All right, so we got the manual out again. So it says the bass response is, is a, in a system is affected by four acoustics of the vehicle, location, speaker, speakers, enclosures, the music you're listening to. And it says the sweep control allows you to select the, the center frequency. The frequency must, the frequency most affected. The Y control and then allows you to adjust the shape of the filter centered on the sweep frequency. So I'm assuming sweep, we want to go lower for lower bass. So that would be a lower frequency than. All right, so this is going to take some experimentation and some tweaking to maybe adjust the levels coming out of the receiver to get the adjustment correct on the blow pump. But as you can see here, we have our subharmonic synthesizer connected and working in, harmon in harmony with our Polk audio subwoofer down there, our 10 inch sub. It is working properly. I highly recommend this already. I love the difference in the sound quality. Guys, I completely forgot to update on the bass control. We did not hook, we did not hook up the bass control, so we're going to do that now. Here we've got the uh, phono wire or phone wire, sorry, for the bass control, and it goes right on the side here, and then it connects to this little potentiometer here, which we can mount wherever we want in the room, and it just plugs straight in, and it has a nice blue LED, pretty bright though. So let me go back to a section with bass here, and we will play with this. 
Now we got this on minimum. That's max. You can see now the blah punch. You can see now the blah punch logo really. That is your base control knob. So that's how the base control knob works and it actually just fell right off. It wasn't plugged in all the way. Notice the red, the blue light coming on for the input. So that's quite a bit of a difference from the stock base with the Blaupunk EP 1600X. All right, guys, just a little final update on this video. I did end up just putting the EP 1600X right here on the corner of the dresser for now. The best mounting spot would be behind the dresser, right back there, and then I actually took a screw out of the back of the receiver and mounted the base knob there because it doesn't really need to be changed much, but it came out really clean. Now I'm noticing a little bit of thumping on my subwoofer. I don't know what that's from. Um, I've got to look into that and see if it's this causing it, but every 10 or 15 seconds it's making a thumping sound. Let's see. Let's see if it does it now. Okay, this is not doing it now. It's definitely the Blau Punk input. Something is causing like a ground loop or something like that. It definitely could be where I have the power plugged in, but there's a little thumping. Let's see if it stopped. Nope, there it is again. So something is causing a little interference with the sub. So I got to get that sorted out. But yeah, that's how it ended up on the Blaupunk EP1600X. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll get the ground loop problem sorted out and let you guys know what happened.